weekly analysis on today's market. And what are you expecting on the market today, Julia? Are we going to mirror the, the gains that we saw on Wall Street overnight, do you think? Maura, it should be a good day on the Australian share market. If we have a look at the 30-day chart of the Aussie market, this is what it looks like. And you can see one of the key barriers for the market has been that 4,300-point mark. Every time we rise above it to about 4,320 points, we come back down again. So hopefully we'll come to test that important resistance level on our market. Of course, we did see a very positive session by the U.S. overnight. And we have seen the U.S. market running extremely hard. It's been up in the last five session, sessions, and we saw the Nasdaq closing at the highest level in more than a decade and if we have a look at the Nasdaq just over the last decade this is what the chart looks like so you can see it's been an impressive performance by the US in fact in the year to date if we have a look at the S&P 500 it's up by 11 percent in 2012 as compared to the Australian market which is only up by 4.7 percent so the US really outperforming uh, some of the other markets around the world Overnight, though, it was news of the stress test and that two of the largest uh, big banks in, uh, in the U.S. had passed. And that saw the Dow Jones Industrial Average gaining an extra 100 points in the last hour of trade. We also saw an extremely good night by commodity prices. In fact, Rio Tinto, in terms of its U.S. ADRs, gaining almost 4%. So it does look like the financial, the material space, the two biggest areas on our market should help our market with a good performance today. And Julia, my out with its half-year results tomorrow. What are you watching for? Because it's been such a closely watched sector of the market given the stress that it's been under from consumer spending and, and interest rate uh, promises. What are we going to see from the big department store chain? Mario, you're absolutely spot on there. The softness that we've been seeing in the retailing sector means that the number one thing that the market's going to be watching is their FY12 guidance. Their four-year guidance now looks like it is at risk of a downgrade. And the management's uh, forecast is for $146 million for the full year. So that's the key to Maya's uh, result tomorrow, the guidance that they, are, uh, they will supposedly issue. And the market watching to see if that $146 million will be downgraded for the year. What we have seen is that softness in the crucial Christmas period. And if we have a look at our anecdotal evidence, it does look like the structural challenges in the sector have been gaining pace in that Christmas period. We saw, uh, we saw entities like PayPal coming out to say that the 5th of December was the biggest week that it had ever seen in Australia. We saw Australia Post coming out to say that it had sent out 3 million more parcels in December, 1 million more than last year. And we also saw uh, companies like Deals Direct coming out to say that sales were up by 40 to 50 percent. So while we are seeing uh, valuation support as well as dividend support for a stock like Maya, it is very difficult to time the bottom of this cycle because some of the structural challenges challenges which are coming from online uh, from the online space as well so we will be watching Maya's result with interest we are expecting to see second quarter sales to be down by 2.2 percent but that full year guidance is the one that the market's going to be watching and guns another one that's likely to be closely watched today I mean pretty bad news losing its big invest investor here and hopes again of getting that pulp mill up and going uh, any sign do you think or hopes for another white night out there well, the countdown is on. This stock is due to come back online on Monday. And if it doesn't have news, that that capital raising has been successful, plus perhaps another big investor on board, then we are going to see quite a substantial fall in its share price. Now, initially, uh, Richard Chandler, which of course is a New Zealand billionaire, was supposed to take up a large chunk of this capital raising. Now it looks like someone's going to have to step up and take up the shortfall. And the key question is who or uh, what entity will be doing that. So we'll be watching any news coming out with uh, from guns very closely. Of course, part of the problem is that guns has a huge amount of debt. In December, it's got about $340 million worth, worth of debt being due, plus a $29 million uh, dollar penalty as well. And we know that to, to try and pay down some of its debt, it is looking at the sale of some of its assets, the Green Triangle Plantation, its Hayfields asset, as well as the uh, MIS loan book. Um, and that should help to share for about $300 million of its debt. But we've really seen no word around these asset sales and of course it needs the funds from this capital raising to proceed with that 2.3 billion dollar uh, Bay Bell Bay pulp mill and this is all about uh, turning its product into something that's I guess more valuable to export it has been under pressure because of the high Australian dollar and trying to compete with those cheaper Asian exports so guns really in focus this week the countdown is on Mondays when the stocks coming back online the market's going to be watching the capital raising and whether it can get another white night on board